It was another drama-filled week in the ANZ Championship as the Adelaide Thunderbirds inflicted the Melbourne Vixens, the Premiership favourites, with their first loss of the season. The West Coast Fever answered their critics, as did the Northern Mystics, notching up their first win of 2013. It was a round to remember. As I say hello and welcome to Centre Pass, the official video podcast of the ANZ Championship. Dan Ryan here alongside former Australian skipper Catherine Harvey-Williams. And Kath, round five certainly delivered some classic games. Yeah, it was a magnificent round actually and a couple of surprises, but let's start I guess with a couple of teams that really struggle in particular areas. The Fever struggled to beat Australian sides, they absolutely annihilated the Swifts. The Thunderbirds got the monkey off the back, Dan, by just getting over the Vixens. And the interesting one for me, and I thought it was an easy tip, I thought the Pulse would annihilate the Mystics given where things are at this season. But the Mystics got up in what was an absolute thriller, some controversy, but it was a terrific game, good for the competition, and this week's even harder to pick, which is great. Certainly is. Speaking of the controversy from the Pulse Mystics game, we're going to take a look at some vision in a moment. Let's set the scene for you. The Central Pulse lead by one goal in regulation time. There's six seconds left on the clock. The Mystics have possession. From here on in, make your own assumptions as to what happens next. Check it out. As they say, the rest is history there. Maria Tutaya sinking the goal to send the game into overtime. She then sunk the match winner in that extra time period. The Mystics getting up over the line by a goal. Kath, it was a very big call made by the umpire. A lot of talk across both sides of the ditch as to whether the contact should have been called. There was definitely hands in the back from Katrina Grant. Whether there was a big enough push to warrant the call, I'm not sure. What do you think? Well, I might throw it back at you, Dan. Don't get me into trouble. What do you think? <laughs> I'm sitting on the fence. Like I said, yeah. I think there was definitely hands in the back from Grant, but whether it was enough to shift Latu in the air or off the ground, I don't know. Hands in the back. Hands in the back, isn't it? Um, look, the first time I saw it, I thought there was something in it. It was yeah, touch and go, but it wasn't an absolute shocker by the umpire. So I think you can give her the benefit of the doubt. So I'm on the umpire's side <laughs> for the first time in my life. But as a player, I feel for Katrina Grant because it, it was a soft penalty, but I, I do think it was there. But there they're the sorts of things that can really shape your season. And I remember, you know, a long, long time ago losing a grand final because of a call that was incorrect. And that still sits with me. It doesn't make me lose sleep, but I, I still remember it to this day. So, you know, it's not ideal for the player, particularly in a crunch game like that, particularly when it's so tight in terms of the context of the season. Um, you know, it could cost them in the end. Yeah, full credit to the umpire for having the courage to make the call under such a crucial moment of the game. But let's hope that this moment doesn't haunt the Central Pulse come the finals time. Let's review now all of the results from round five of the ANZ Championship. It, of course, started on Sunday with the Adelaide Thunderbirds finally getting a win over the Melbourne Vixens, having lost their past five encounters it was a thrilling one goal win, 39 to 38. The West Coast Fever redeemed themselves to beat an Australian team with a dominant 20 goal win over the New South Wales Swifts. A desperate Northern Mystics outfit claimed their first win of the season with a one goal win over the Pulse in another overtime epic, their second consecutive overtime game in the season. And the Magic was simply too good for the Canterbury Tactics, winning that one by 20 goals, 65 to 45. The Firebirds and the Steel both having the bye in round five. Kath checking out the competition ladder as it stands after five terrific rounds. The top four teams remain the same, but the Thunderbirds and Magic both jumping up a few places. Yeah, look, the interesting aspect to that uh, premiership table there are the Firebirds sitting on top, yet to play the big guns, yet to play the Thunderbirds, Magic and Vixens. I'll be so bold and predict that the Swifts and Mystics and Tactics are out of the running and the Steel as well. And that Pulse loss, like you said, I think it's going to cost them their season because you know they were looking at being the second New Zealand side in that top four, and it gets really tight when you get to the, the final rounds of the competition. So you know, it's going to be tough for them from here on end, I think. Certainly will be. Let's now turn our attention to round six of the competition. Four games coming your way. Once again, the New South Wales Swiss and the Canterbury Tactics having the bye this round. The first game we want to talk about will be an absolute beauty. The West Coast Fever hosting the Melbourne Vixens. This game will be played at Perth Arena. The first time an ANZ Champs game has been played there. Can seat up to 14,000 spectators. Huge game for both teams. The Vixens coming off their first loss. When it comes to this game, I was thinking that the midcourt would decide who was going to win. When Ashley Brazel went down for the Fever the other day, Day, 
I think that is going to cost the fever the game on the weekend. Karen Howarth, we still don't know if she's going to line up. If she's not in the Vixens lineup, then that could be costly for them. But I just, I think the midcourt is where it's going to be won and lost. And without Brazel, you know, she's had such a fine season. I just think she's irreplaceable. So it's going to be a tight one. It's going to be a great. There's going to be a great crowd there. It's really exciting, and the Fever uh, have got some exciting times ahead of them. But I'm not sure if they can quite do it this week. The word is Ash Brazel may be out for two to three weeks with that ankle injury. These two teams have a pretty good history of close games. The last time they met in last year in 2012 was only a one goal loss. The key for this game may also be the Cox Bassett combination up against Mentor Chatfield. Yeah, and you look at that combination as well, and I actually think it also swings the way of the Vixens. I think it's a really good matchup. I think Mentor and Chatfield are, are in very good form, and Bassett and Cox are as well. But, you know, I just think without Brazel in the midcourt and with those sorts of matchups, it's, it just sways at the Vixens' way. That is the West Coast Fever hosting the Melbourne Vixens on Saturday at Perth Arena. The next game we want to touch on the Queensland Firebirds up against the Adelaide Thunderbirds. A top of the table clash. The Firebirds coming off the bye. The Thunderbirds buoyed by their first win over the Vixens in a couple of years. But as you mentioned, this is probably more of a big test for the Firebirds having not played the top teams yet. But the Thunderbirds very match hard and coming into this one. And I think that's the key, Dan, because the Firebirds firstly haven't played a top four side. They're coming off the bye. Generally, it gives you time to get going. The Thunderbirds have come off a game against the Fever two weeks ago where they were magnificent. They finally have beaten the Vixens after a couple of years of really struggling. So I think in terms of mindset, it, it is in favour of the Thunderbirds. It's going to be a tight game and every game is very hard to pick this round. But, you know, I, I just think that match hardened aspect to the Thunderbirds is going to be the key for them. So the Firebirds hosting the Adelaide Thunderbirds on Sunday in Brisbane. Another huge game which is so hard to pick based on current form. The Central Pulse currently ranked sixth up against the fourth place Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. We know they are the defending champion. Robin Broughton fuming at that call against Katrina Grant that cost them the game in the end. How will the Magic step up for this one? They were terrific last week against the Pulse, but this is, an, sorry, against the Tactics. A huge game between these two sides. Yeah, look, and isn't it amazing how, you know, 12 months is such a, a long or short time in netball because it, the blockbuster in New Zealand used to be the Magic versus the Mystics. Now it is the Pulse versus the Magic. We're going to see a real test of character for the Pulse. They've come up off that loss where they probably think they were robbed. Will they rebound? Will they be fuming and come in and have that animalistic nature about them? Or will they be so shattered that they actually can't match it with the Magic? Look, I think they've got enough experienced players to come out and put in a really tough performance. But I saw the Magic the other day. Yes, it was only against the Tactics, but they, they've certainly got a spring in their steps. Van Dyke was playing extremely well. And their defensive end, which I think is the key to this game, Coppola and De Bruyne were on fire. So, you know, I think the Magic just... Hubs, I want to touch on the Central Pulse for a moment. Every game they've played this year, they've put themselves in a winning position. They've just unfortunately shown signs of capitulating under pressure and losing match-winning leads. Is this a huge concern for Robin Broughton and her team early on in the year? Yeah, look, it's it is because, you know, looking at the Premiership table and where they're at, you know, if they just won one, maybe two of those games, they'd be sitting pretty for the rest of the season. But I'm surprised because they've got so many experienced players in there with Wilkins, Leota, Katrina Grant, Caitlin Thwaites, that they have sort of capitulated at crucial times. But they are a team on the rise, and I've got, I guess you've got to expect certain character flaws and and that's one of them. But, you know, I don't expect them to uh, lose more games when they're leading by six, seven, eight goals. That'll be a pressure cooker game. The Central Pulse hosting the Waikato Bay of Plenty of Magic in Wellington on Sunday. A Monday night game is another hard one to pick. The Southern Steel currently seventh, up against the Northern Mystics currently ninth. It's been an interesting fortnight for the Southern Steel with the sacking of Natalie Avellino. It caught the players off guard. They were surprised by it. This will be the first time they've stepped out on court since that issue off court. The Mystics obviously having their first win of the season, but still, toss a coin on this one, hard to predict. Really hard. <laughs> Who are you picking? <laughs> <laughs> Look, and isn't it interesting that you can have a coaching panel? You're involved with the Thunderbirds, where I guess you've got to give credit to Southby and Avellino, whereby the players had no ideas about the massive issues that were occurring off the court. So I found that, find that surprising, but I don't think that will affect the players. Um, the key to this game, I think, is Fowler against possibly Jess Moulds. You know, if Fowler's on fire, the Steel will win because I expect the Mystics to shoot a lot of goals. If Fowler's contained, then the Steel have got no chance. If she's on fire and shoots her, you know, average, what is it, 50 or 60 <laughs> goals, then they will certainly match it. Um, so it's going to be a tight one and very hard to pick. I can't wait to find out who you select then. <laughs> well, I'll tell you in just a moment, Kath, as we now turn our attention to our tips for round six of the competition. We both notched up three from four again la against last week. Harbs, you still lead by one. My tips this week, though, are... The Melbourne Vixens just over the West Coast Fever based on the fact there'll be no Ashley Brazel. If she was there, I would have reversed it, but I'm going with the Vixens. The Thunderbirds over the Queensland Firebirds. 
I'm backing the Central Pulse to get it right against the Magic, and I'm tipping the Steel, based on Janelle Fowler, to be too strong for the Mystics defender. So that's who I'm going for. Oh, good. There's going to be a change in the <laughs> leaderboard if we one of us gets it wrong. So I am going, I'm with you, Vixens, Thunderbirds. I'm going the Magic over the Pulse, contrary to what you're saying, and I'll go for the Mystics over the Steel. Well, things are heating up in the ANZ Championship, also in our tipping competition here on Centre Pass. That's all we have time for for this week's episode. Thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you check out the ANZ Champs website for all of the broadcast details. Catherine, thank you again for all your insights. Make sure you enjoy the netball this weekend, and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye for now.